Hey, we're here for a sermon extra. It's been a couple weeks because uh, we had a Monday off with Labor Day, and that we were all just too busy to find a little time to get together. And, and we were record. laboring. We were laboring a laboring lot, on Labor but not Day. on Labor Day. We yeah. rested on Labor Day. But yeah. Uh, yeah. we are into a new sermon series now, Messiah Strong, and it's not as long of a sermon series as uh, Romans. No, nope. no, that's for sure. Nope. But uh, we kicked it off uh, with you preaching. Yeah, um, yeah, no, uh, yeah. I uh, just kind of a kind of a rundown of why Messiah is strong. I mean, we just got out of the Book of Romans, which is just one of the uh, most amazing books of just getting into the theology, the justification, and even down to as we turn that corner in chapter twelve to what does it look like to live that out. Well, Messiah Strong really is about living that out. So it was a really good connection to the end of Romans. Uh, the, the whole study on Romans was looking at what, who has God called us to be? Mm -hmm. um, what has he called us to do in this world? And, you know, why was it that Jesus, at the very end of his earthly ministry, it's both recorded in Matthew 28 and then also in Acts chapter 1, you know, why did he leave by saying, now go? and do the following, you know, go make disciples. You are now my witnesses to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Because of the, um, the beauty of this message and the hope that it brings to a lost world. And so mm -hmm. Messiah Strong is really looking at us as a family of ministries, because there's a lot of ministries that take place at Messiah. So it's not just worship in church, just school or early childhood. It's everything together. And together, we want to be strong in how God has called, developed, and organized and equipped us to carry out ministry. And so, um, I, you know, I like the Ephesians uh, passage, you know, finally be strong in the Lord and, and in the strength of His might. So our strength comes not from ourselves, it comes from being on the foundation of Jesus Christ. But then as we look at each week, we're going to talk about pieces of strength, the, the, the elements of strength is probably a better way to put it of each one leading to the next. It's, it's so like this last Sunday was on connect. Uh, that's the, the technical term. I didn't use that as a title for the message, but it's all on relationships and connecting with one another. And that idea that, that God has called us into fellowship, the main gist of the message was God designed us to be relational. God is relational. I didn't say that in the message, but I mean, that's certainly the most fundamental part of this. The triune God is in of himself relational. He's created us relationally. And we're not meant to go this alone. And starting off with it, you know, the the old story of the ember, um, you know, that's taken out of the fire goes out. You Sweet. know, try it on your Weber grill someday, but don't put that live coal somewhere that can catch fire. Uh, right. But uh, but you know, try. I mean, seriously, to, you, you know, it, it's a great uh, illustration. If maybe you are having a backyard barbecue and you you know got your kids around to, in a safe way, take a charcoal piece and say, oh, "Look, it's all red. Let's put it off to the side by itself." And, and it goes out. It needs the other charcoals around it. They feed off of mm -hmm. each other. Well, in the same way, we as the people of God, we need each other. And so this whole connection, and we, we've you know launched uh, last spring and continue to push forward this idea of life groups. What a perfect, beautiful way to be able to gather, connect with one another. Mm -hmm. So each week in September, we're going to take another piece of our DNA. Who, who has God called us to be? And just kind of look at it through the lens of God's word and through the joy of both celebrating who we are, mm -hmm. but then also recognizing God has a lot more in store for us. I mean, there's a lot more growth. Mm -hmm. And that was the best thing that you said. I loved this. You gave this quote um, from the Harvard study and about, you know, post COVID, it got worse. It was mm -hmm. already bad. Right. <laughs> you said, we don't need the U.S. Surgeon General and their advisory council Right. To tell us how to connect and be in relationship. Right. God right. has designed that. And then you yeah. want him to say, God calls us, gathers us, unifies us well, as his family. And that's that. what I wanted people to see in that moment. It's yeah. like, look around you. You're sitting in God's strategy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's his strategy. That, yes. Bringing Super us cool. together as the people of God. Now, the question is, for all those other people out in the world that are dealing with isolation and loneliness, mm -hmm. how can they become part of what we know and what we enjoy and what we celebrate? Yeah. Um, you know, so that's an outside perspective, but even inside, 
Uh, and again, somebody asked me after the service, uh, we were kind of kidding around that, you know, they're like, uh, um, you know, do you preach that for yourself? Do you preach that for others? And I'm like, well, you know, we, we, you know, we always say we preach to ourselves for before sure. we bring it out. But I said, if, if you want to know, and, and I said, in honesty, the one sentence in my message that would have been just about me personally, not all the time, but some of the time, I said, you can be in the middle of a crowd hmm. in the midst of people and still feel lonely. And, and it isn't because you don't have lots of relationships, but if there are a few deep ones or something, and I'm not suggesting I don't have deep relationships. I just know what it means to be surrounded by people, but still feel lonely. Sure. So from an outside perspective, there's lots of people lost and alone and we need to invite them in. But an inside perspective, one of the reasons that life groups are so beautiful is because it can help. And that's, that's where I think I've found part of that, um, remedy yeah. is I've been in a, when, when they were small groups, you know, I, since I came to Messiah in 2000, I've been in a small group and now life group and that's changed. It's some people have shot off and started their own. And yeah. there's a core of us that are still together and we've added people, but, um, we have life group tonight, in fact. Yep. And it's like, it is such a beautiful place to do life together and find that support, love and encouragement. So, and I think, uh, it's a part of a global problem and you got into that a little bit of like, you know, the bowling alone issue of small yeah. town communities aren't just yeah. hyper connected anymore. You know, it's gotten yeah. more individualized and that those small town kind of atmospheres and we're all family kind of thing. And, yeah. uh, it's, it's happening globally, but that's so I, crazy, brother. I was going to bring in bowling yeah, alone. I was, uh, there was a, a lot reference. of quotes. Yeah. It's, it's such that a was great the kind book. of the, yeah. it yeah. was happening already, but it was really the, the start and the beginning that of that. Bill Eason. Is that, that sounds yeah, right. Bill yeah. Eason, I think it wrote bowling alone, yeah. but, but, that's that's a, a global problem, but I do think it happens in churches too, where many people go to church and maybe even every Sunday, and they, I guess, enough, one way to say it is dip their toe in. You know, it's like mm -hmm. I come and I hear God's word, and amazing things can happen from that. But they don't, like we would say, go any further down the discipleship pathway. And somebody could look at that and say, "Well, you know, all the things you have to do." But really, what we're talking about and what Messiah Strong is all about is taking one little step or one baby step or, or joining a life group, they're not have tos, they're get tos, but they're also a part of this transformation, yep. that spiritual formation process. And so I love that, that we start with relationships because even if it's just one other person you connect with at your church, that could change everything. Well, and one invitation. And, and real quick, I need to correct. Yeah. It wasn't Billy some, he okay. wrote other things. This okay. is uh, Robert Putnam, Put uh, Putnam, Putnam that Putnam, did bowling you. alone. Thank so you. just make sure the record yep, is straight. For the record. But uh, the research has shown that somebody that joins a church, if they don't have, uh, what is it like five or six significant relationships within like six months, yeah. they'll leave. Yeah. And so the need for those relationships, again, that's an internal thing. Yeah. They're already in the church, already believers, but, Again, what an offering for the people outside the church is to offer that many relationships, mm -hmm. but it means we need to be, and that's why I kind of put at the very end, this isn't just about us. This is about the generations that will follow. Mm -hmm. If we don't see relationships within the body of Christ as important, neither will our children, our grandchildren, and then our neighbors, coworkers, friends, things like that. They need to see in us that this is important and then they'll follow. Yeah. And if not, then it can, becomes just more disconnected, more isolating. And the scary, I, if, if I had more time yesterday, I yeah. could have brought in a lot of studies. This, it's yeah. scary. And it, and again, and it's not against AI. It's not against electronics and not, not against all these social media, but the studies done on young people We've today, be honest about it. Yeah. Is I don't care how many people tell me that followers and friends online are real relationships. Mm -hmm. They're, I mean, they're real they're in the sense of they're people. To, there's some, there's, some, there's yeah. something there, but they cannot replace the intimacy of one-on-one, yeah. -on -one, press the flesh, in presence, in-person yeah. relationships. If that were true, and I, I, I can't say that it's true for everyone. There are people that find great comfort in that community. Mm -hmm. But if it were true that that were the resolution to this, we would not have a, a loneliness epidemic. Right. Okay. So uh, of, a, of the four of us, I've probably got more online yeah. connections uh, yeah, you than any yeah. of you. Yeah. I just, uh, I've been in that world and I have made friends. I've got a, a guy in Los Angeles I can't wait to meet. He's a, a comic book uh, guy. That's how we connected and met. Mm -hmm. He is a 
I will not say a fringe Christian, but he's he's really yeah. kind of he believes, but he doesn't have a a big church to connect with, and he's mm-hmm. got a few family members that also are believers. So he asks me questions at times, and I I just see through his his talk and his interaction that he's got he's 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 feeling God, he sees God's there, and and so it's fun to have some yeah, of those. Yeah. Connections those you wouldn't connections. have otherwise, right? You can't just yes. yeah, ever connect so those, otherwise. Yeah, that's but, um, good. But I, I long to connect yes. in person with sure. him and have a chance yeah. to yeah. to get to know him more. And and well, I know she won't listen to this. My own daughter is is twenty five and is in the online dating circle. Yeah. And that same thing. It's just it's you can connect and, and kind of get to know what people like and their interests. But you really can't get to know them until really you know sit them, yeah. down with them, right? And right. and have a chance. And you got to make sure they are who they say they are online. Oh, so there's that whole thing. We won't go down that whole road. But yeah, yeah. you yeah. you can. It's great to be able to connect with people yeah. and to find with similar interests and all that. But to really, really yeah. build that yeah. relationship, you have got to have time together. And I'm going to bridge to you, Dustin, so that you can have your your now thought out wisdom that you're going to share in a moment. <laughs> I have my thoughts. But the thing that the thing that I love is we talked about life group, which is a huge piece of this puzzle, but I drove up to Wednesday nights last week and we had over 300 people in this space on a Wednesday night connecting mm-hmm. around God's word for sure. There was a lot of study teaching components to it, but they were together in this place. And I just think of before and after how many people are getting to see each yep. other in yep. the middle of the week. Yep. Um, I think about um, our mission festival coming up. We're going to be breaking bread together in a potluck situation. I think about all these different ways we have to connect. Those are just a few and there's so many. And and that just shows it's a strength. Messiah strong. It's a strength of ours. Right. Is right. We, it's hard to be a part of the Messiah family and not connect. Like we're making so many intentional opportunities for people to connect. And I think that's such an amazing strength we have and something that we can keep inviting people into. So whether it's connectedness or life together, relationship, fellowship, whatever word you want to use to describe it, I mean, that's part of our DNA. And so we're made in the image of God. And if you go back to Genesis, it's um, let us, right? Yeah. Us, plural, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So God in his own essence and nature is three persons in, in one. He's all about relationship and that community and so being made in his image means that we have that within us um sin has caused a a break in all that but scott to your point like there's a longing to see right yes you can make those connections in those ways but a longing to see face to face that's how we were made to be in relationship with god and others and what we're longing for is the day to come when we get to see yeah. God again, face to face when we get yeah. to be. So um, I'm thinking of uh, the tangible kingdom, the primer, yeah, and that quote from the beginning of it, community, how it's really lost yeah. on us today and how people are longing for it, desire it. But Everybody wants ways, it, but they don't know they how to don't get know it or they don't put the time it. and energy in. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a powerful quote. You're, you're talking about longing to meet your friend in uh, Los Angeles. You said yeah. Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Um, think about the person sitting in the pew that's longing for a, a deeper relationship mm-hmm. with just somebody nearby. They can already see them, right. but feel isolated. Mm-hmm. Um, how many people are sitting in their homes, be it a Sunday morning or another time? You know, I, I, when I gave some of those stats, how do people deal with loneliness and distractions, uh, TV, yeah. social media, whatever, yeah. uh, alcohol, drug abuse, um, lots of different things. And so, you know, we're in a, like the side of Lincoln where we don't have a lot of like, uh, uh, poverty needs because it's a it's a fairly middle to higher income on the east side of Lincoln as opposed to like our mother church of Calvary that's surrounded more with that opportunity for people that might be struggling. So what are our people struggling with at our side of our uh, of, of Lincoln per se? Relationships, isolation, loneliness, uh, rejection, you name it. Uh, there's there's a lot of ways in which the strength that God has woven into our fabric can be that lighthouse to a community. And I think that makes our people our strongest advocates because if they go out into their community and go, hey, you should come to my church because, or have your kids come to our school or whatever, because they are, they're about relationships. They're about being family. They're about, again, not perfect. But see, that's the problem is that some people are like, well, 
I came there once and I, I didn't feel welcome. Well, okay, that very well could have happened. Why? Let's look at it. Does, was, you know, were you crossing your arms with an angry scowl walking around or did, was it a bad day for us? You know, it could be any number yeah, of things. For sure. But the point is, is that Satan's going to work on us to try to convince us, yeah, you, you guys aren't doing this well or you're, you're messing up or you're going to, you know, whatever the case might be. But the point is, is that I believe what God has made a strength at Messiah is our heart and desire. I had someone tell me this the other day, and this isn't to try to pat us on the back as pastors. It was just, it was, it was interesting. They said they went to the church that they belong to. Pastors don't greet anybody. Hmm. They, when the service starts, they come in from a door to the side of the sanctu- of, the, of the sacristy or the chancel area. And at the end of the service, they go back in. They're not at the door to greet. They're not walking around there. And, and so they came to Messiah and they're like, well, you guys are like out shaking hands and saying hello. And to me, it's like, okay, that just seems like a no brainer. Mm-hmm. Why? I don't even I was think almost about late it. to do liturgy mm-hmm. a couple of times because yeah. of the oh, yeah. <laughs> been many pros and cons to where I'm like, why oh, am I not surprised? Oh, that yeah, the yeah. countdown is at zero. I got I'm there. The I got there. Go, go, yeah. go. But the point is, I just, I, I don't think about it. We just do yeah. it. Yeah. And, but some people's experiences out there aren't like yeah. that. So I think it's, it's again, this strong, Messiah strong is not us patting ourselves on the back yeah. going, yay us for our own glory. It's saying, thank you, God, for making yeah. us strong because we're going to move from connections this week into what it means to grow, right, as disciples. As So, yeah. We're made for life together. So then what does that look like? And in particular, when we follow Jesus as disciples, we follow our rabbi, what does he invite us into? And there are different marks, different rhythms, uh, different steps along that way, that path. And so worship, growing, being his word, serving within our church family, outside our church family, giving witness and, and celebrating it, what God is doing. And so... Um, we're going to take a journey down that pathway, discipleship pathway this next week. So excited about that. Yeah. And they can. I brought it up in the message yesterday as a point, but you're going to use it as a text leading into if someone wants to read ahead just to kind of prepare for Sunday. Yeah. So it is where we see it living out. So after the disciples were following Jesus for those three years of ministry, and then as you mentioned earlier, go, mm-hmm. right? Go live this out, do it. Right. It's Acts 2. 42 to 47, where mm. you just have this incredible so picture of what the church and one of the first things it starts with is they devoted their lives to. Yeah. And so I remember past life group we've, we've been in one of our previous churches. Um, Maggie was in that life group and, and um, she has a, a heritage uh, from the Chinese and, and the culture. And so she had her English Chinese Bible. And so I was intrigued by like in another language, yeah. like what, what is that word? We have it translated devoted. What what would it be? And she said, well, the closest word that she could use to connect to is to follow. And I was like, oh, so that's what they were doing. Like they were following mm-hmm. Jesus by devoting their lives to these things. And then that is, you just get that picture of how God is using these things to help us grow in our faith and in our walk with him. Oh, that's cool. We're going to do it. And then I think the week after that, we're going to look at what it means to grow God's kingdom, to be a part of that, the the beauty of seeing lives impacted and changed. And we're going to look at how God calls us to be a part of ministry, because that's what makes ministry happen, Mm -hmm. is is God using each one of us in very unique, special ways. So, yeah, hopefully, then it's leading to um, the... After the first week in October, we have a mission festival, yeah. right? And so, Be really exciting. Yeah, I mentioned a, an opportunity to gather. There's three yeah. things happening. One, we're going to be highlighting a, a longtime partner of ours, Gleanings, who Scott, I know you're very familiar with. Mm-hmm. And we had a great group of people go last year that had, yep. they came back saying, hey, we've got to tell this story. Like yep. this partner is making a huge impact. So we're going to tell that story uh, with a guest um, that will be coming from there, Gleanings. And then uh, we're going to be highlighting some of our missionaries and the great mission work we're doing right here in Lincoln. Uh, some programs that have been meaningful to Messiah for a long time. We'll highlight those even more. And then lastly, we're going to break bread together. It's all about all, all ages getting together to, to have a potluck and um, maybe some nostalgia, thinking back to things we've done before. Some fried chicken will be brought in and then everybody will be invited to bring a potluck dish to share and 
it'll just be a great morning of worship and, and time together. Mm, that's awesome. That's great. awesome. Very you good. had me at fried chicken. And it's you had me fried chicken. I will say it is oh, my there. 36th birthday, so there will be pie being bought, brought for me that I'm happy <laughs> to share. So there you I'm go. Oh, there you go. I hope there you brought enough for everybody. I Come on. I think there'll be a, yeah, a bunch right. of pie. I, I think that's really. what I wanted. And so can I put my my order in for rhubarb? I was going to say here it is. That's my rhubarb. Rhubarb. So. No, very cool. Um, yeah, exciting. So I guess today, anything else we need to share, wrap up? Good kickoff. Great that job. should do. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Awesome. Sounds awesome. good. We'll be back next week.